everyone, Dr. Denise Dart here. Happy Monday. Today's video is a follow-on to a video that I did about a year ago, almost to the day. It was a come-as-you-are party in a sense. I had packed up my home, was preparing to move quite a distance, and really start over. <laughs> and you know, I got a question this week that made me think about that and think about that journey. And this sweet person, her question was, how do I break free? How do I step back when I have no support system? I have no family. I have no friends. I have nothing but this relationship. And isn't that just the a picture of a narcissistic, abusive relationship in a nutshell? This person wants to isolate you from anything that you enjoy, that you're interested in, anyone that you love, people, friends that you like to spend time with, family who loves you, and would not at all be happy about what's going on within the walls of your home. And so to this person, I wanna say, begin where you are. Stop believing the lie that the abuser is telling you. Stop believing that you don't have a choice you can choose to do anything you want. You know, if you move to a new city, as I did, you don't know people when you first get there. So what do you do? Step out of your comfort zone. Go Join a book club. Go to the gym. Go to an exercise class. Go to the same one over and over. Join a yoga community. Join a church. There are so many things that we can do to reach outside of ourselves. And if that feels impossible to you, for whatever reason, maybe you feel overcome with panic, anxiety. If that's the case, step out and get yourself the best therapist you can find. Someone who understands narcissistic emotional abuse, who understands personality disorder so that they understand what you're going through and who can help support you with dealing with your anxiety so that you can move on. Maybe join an anxiety support group. There are so many ways to create the support that you have been robbed of. You know, when, when I went through this years ago. It was so insidious how my life became so small. I will never forget the day I was walking with a friend and I said, you know, somehow my life has become the size of a thimble. I go to work, which I loved, and I came home and the expectation is that I be there, not on the phone, not out with friends, not inviting friends in. And this was never stated. It was an insidious thing that happened over time. And that's the way emotionally abusive relationships are. They're twisted. Your perception of reality is twisted with gaslighting where when you remind them, the last couple times I've asked if we could have people over, you said that we were too busy or that you didn't want to or whatever. When you remind them about this, they'll say, that's just not true. I love having people over, whatever it is. So it's okay. Whatever brought you to where you are, the first thing I want you to do is drop judgment. Drop judgment about how could I let this happen to me? I'm a smart woman. How could I let someone do this to me? 
I will tell you now that whoever you are, you are in very good company. There are smart men and women all over the world who have gotten into relationships with a person who in the beginning was over the top charming, loving, connected. It was different than any relationship you had ever encountered before. And at that time, likely you had no idea that relationships with personality disordered individuals such as narcissistic, borderline, antisocial, this is the way they begin. And so you get lured into this situation and like the frog in the water that just slowly comes up to the boiling point, if you had hopped in and seen what it is today, you would have jumped out so fast. But it happens over time and it's twisted and it's confusing. But what I wanna tell you is that you can go from wherever you are today Take a step. If you think about, what do I do? Okay, if you think about, I'm gonna join a book group. And you ask yourself, how likely am I to do that? And the answer is like, well, on a scale of one to 10, a two or a three, then that's too lofty a goal for you right now. So think of something else. Maybe I'm not ready for a book club. Maybe I'm gonna join a anxiety support group. How likely am I to do that? And listen for the answer. Maybe that's a five or a six. Okay, so a much more reasonable goal. If you get back an eight or a nine, I'm gonna begin by walking around the block and getting stronger, enjoying the outdoors, feeding my spirit, <coughs> excuse me, exercising my body. Whatever it is, I want you to Set that goal, ask yourself the question, how likely is it that I'm, to, I'm gonna do this on a scale of one to 10? Anything five or under, it's too lofty a goal. Come back to a smaller goal that you can set and be successful with. We begin where we are. We begin to educate ourselves so that we know like we know like we know that the way we're being treated, number one, is not okay. Number two, looking at the history of the relationship, the cycle's repeated over and over and over and over. Is it gonna change? No. And despite what you're being told, abusive behavior is never, ever, ever, ever your fault. Oftentimes when we're in an unhealthy dynamic, our behavior may change. We maybe find ourselves doing things that are uncharacteristic of us, getting pulled into conflict that we never would have before this. So just give yourself a break. You're in a toxic cesspool of a relationship. You gotta get out. You've gotta have a plan. And getting out involves, first of all, connecting with yourself, knowing that you deserve better, you can have better, and that there is support for you. Um, I do accept messages. I love comments that you post to my site. Every now and then I'll get an email that's four or five pages long. And if you are in a situation where you need that kind of support and help, please consider um, I do one-to-one -one coaching. Perhaps the, a local therapist would be a good place to start. I have an online video course. Um, people who have done one-to-one -one coaching with me often find that they're amazed that it doesn't take a lot of sessions to get clear, get started, get a plan, and then you have ongoing support. So there's lots of different ways for you to get help. There's no reason for you to get stuck. So take a stand for yourself today and to the sweet woman who said, what am I supposed to do? I have no friends, no family, no support, nothing. It is within your choice and your capacity to make a change and stop listening to that voice that's telling you otherwise. 
Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to seeing all of you again soon. Go out and make it a great day. This is Dr. Denise Dart signing off. If you need coaching, let me know. I've got individual and group. I am here to help to make it a great day. Bye-bye.